Hey everybody, this is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to Divine Conversations. So what I've got for you now at this moment in time is a twin flame reading, yeah? We're gonna look into the collective energies of both the combined masculine and feminine. And then after that, we're gonna go into the, uh, the feminine and the masculine individually, yes? So starting with the collective, then we're gonna move to the feminine and the masculine individually right after that, yeah? Um, please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energy is fluid. This reading is not really dated. Um, this is a little bit of a weekly thing that I'm doing, you know, for the twins right now, for the collective right now. Um, so I'm not really not trying to date it, okay? So whenever this message resonates for you, whenever you are guided to watch this reading and it resonates for you in that moment, that that's the then that is the message for you at that time. Also keep in mind that this is a general reading, all right? So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. This is not meant to be a personal reading. However, a lot of people tend to say, you know, sometimes a reading, a general reading will feel eerily personal. And if that's the case for you, then please, by all means, take it. But don't come into, I, I advise you not to come into this uh, expecting it, expecting for it to be a personal reading. Okay. This is a big old general collective check-in. Yeah. Um, yes. And then once we get into the individual energies of the feminine and the masculine, Sure, you could be gaining or getting some insight as to what could be going on with an, a person external to you in the physical world. However, um, me, just I, just like uh, many of the other readers out here, especially those of us that do this twin flame energy, work with this twin flame energy, we advise that you at least try to look at this from the point of view of your inner masculine or inner feminine energy, okay? And especially if you're in an energy of trying to uh, balance and integrate your own feminine or masculine energies, depending on which one you're dominantly uh, resonating with. Like me personally, I'm a man and I dominate, I, re I dominantly resonate with feminine energy. Um, so, you know, it, it, especially if you're working on integrating those inner energies, then that's the, the, that section is probably gonna be a good place for you to gain some really good insight. Also keep in mind that when, I speak to the feminine and the masculine. I am not speaking to gender, okay? This is energy. Like I said, I am male, obviously. <laughs> I'm a physical man, but I resonate more as uh, a feminine being, okay? Excellent. So with that said, let's get straight into it. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved in terms of the Twin Flame journey from a collective point of view, then from the feminine point of view, and then finally from the masculine point of view. And please bring us any guidance that you have for us at this moment in time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Spirit. Alrighty, kids. So, collectively speaking, both the masculine and the feminine, the feminine and the masculine combined. Let's look at what messages we have for the twins at this moment. So we're gonna start with the Sacred Geometry Activations Oracle. And from a collective standpoint of both the feminine and the masculine energies, what messages do we have for the twins, for the collective at this time? One last shuffle. All right, let's see what we've got. What messages do we have for the Twin Flame Collective at this time? Please, Spirit. Okay. Ooh. Okay, first card out is Tantric Journey. All right, let's get one more here. Perfect. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, at the bottom of the deck, overall energy, we have card number 36, prosperity. And this says, <laughs> just 441 on the counter. Okay, so this says, the frequency of prosperity supports our feeling of well-being and allowing the, inclus the inclusion of everything that makes our body, mind, heart, soul, and spirit sing. 
It invites us to express ourselves in joy and celebration of the abundance and riches that the universe provides. Excellent. Okay. So now the first card that came out is in fact card number 42, Tantric Journey. And this says the frequency of Tantric Journey helps us to unlock the hidden knowledge and wisdom that we intrinsically hold about how to reach a state of wholeness and completion through our sensual experiences with ourselves and with another, okay? And so the first thing that I'm getting uh, on behalf of the collective right now, and I, um, you might be hearing a little bit of yard work going on outside. I apologize if that's distracting in any way. Um, but the first thing that I'm getting with Tantric Journey here is that there is definitely um, a fusion that's happening between the masculine and the feminine right now. And that really could be changing a lot of aspects to your life or a lot of the ways that you're seeing yourself, you're seeing the world around you, 555 on the counter. You're, there may even be um, changing how you see yourself in relation to the world around you, okay? Um, with the balancing of masculine and feminine energy here, it's like you, you, you ooh, for some of you, um, you may be feeling like a really a, a strong surge in power. Um, you may be going through a period where your Kundalini energy is awakening or is rising. You might be feeling a strong influx of sexual energy, which is really just creative energy. I would recommend uh, that you harness that as much as you can, not release it as much as you can, um, especially if you're male. Uh, orgasming for men tends to drain out. Well, it does. It drains our life force. Uh, women, it's different. That helps you to build life force. Um, but the more that you can harness this energy, the more that you can bring this energy up the spinal column, up your sush sush sushumna, excuse me, which is the, 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 the energetic channel that connect that runs through your chakra system yes and the more that you can bring that energy up from the lower chakras up into the higher chakras the better uh, it would be for you right now because you could really be using that to help create change in your life okay there's that sexual energy or the t uh, uh, sexual energy or like um what is it? oh kundalini energy energy or whatnot whatever that is creative energy okay and if you do have a partner like say if you're in union with your twin or you do have a partner that you feel comfortable with, that you feel safe with, and you want to express this energy, you guys want to get into some, you know, t practicing Tantra or whatnot, whatever, I recommend that you do it. Go ahead. Why not? Right? Okay. Next card we have is card number 15, Compassion. And this card says, the frequency of compassion supports our ability to stand by others without judgment and to be the divine mediator between heaven and earth spirit and matter so that unconditional love can flow from source through our heart and into the world hold on just a second okay sorry about that guys um i noticed that my laptop was doing something funky and uh, the last time it was doing that thing that was funky i lost the video that i created the video file got corrupted severely corrupted somehow and I had to restart and this is going to be a long reading and I'm not trying to have to restart. So I wanted to make sure that everything was okay. So getting back to what we have here, we're at card number 15, compassion. Um, so what I'm getting with compassion is this is definitely uh, related or connected to this tantric journey energy, this tantric energy that's happening. There is, like I said, with tantric journey, there is definitely a fusion of the masculine and feminine energies that's coming more to a forefront, to the forefront. Spirit is saying it's becoming more prominent within the collective and it's creating a lot of change. And this energy of compassion is absolutely necessary here for us to keep in mind because um, the more compassionate we are, the easier that this fusion is going to be, all right? So just because, now look, I, I feel like some of you are kind of, um, getting, kind of getting a little on edge um, because you're like, you're, you may be in a position where you're in separation from like your divine counterpart or your twin or whatnot, whatever. And um, you're actually probably, uh, what I feel like is you're quite good on your own, you're not trying to bring this person back. And as I'm speaking of this, some of you are getting a little bit triggered talking about, mm, I'm not trying to have that person back in my life. That's fine. You don't, if, you, if, that's, if that's not what you want, then that's fine. You don't have to have that. You don't have to create that, all right? However, you still need to be holding compassion. Compassion is a, 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 an element or a facet, in my opinion, to unconditional love. 
And that's really kind of the message in this journey is about being in and embodying and anchoring unconditional love. So just because you may be in a period in your life right now, and yes, the feminine is kind of really striking out on her own right now in some really big ways, but we'll get into the feminine energy later. But if you are in an energy of strong independence and really stepping out on your own and um, having taken steps to really move forward in an independent way, two, two, two on the counter, that doesn't mean that you can't hold compassion, hold understanding, hold unconditional love, not only for your divine counterpart, who in essence was a, is a catalyst for you at this time, um, but everyone else in your life, regardless of what has happened, regardless of whatever has gone on between you guys, okay? The other aspect of this is forgiveness, and I'm pretty sure that might, that'll probably come up from some of the decks that I have here, but that was a message from last week's reading. Um, but forgiveness is necessary, forgiveness is key here, but forgiveness is really just for yourself. I mean, it's really more for yourself than it is for the other person. And that's, uh, that's because that element of forgiveness is going to free you from whatever negativity, wrongdoing, whatnot, whatever you've experienced in the past. Okay? So the, there's, this is a really strong message right now for the Twin Flame Collective, whether you find yourself on the feminine side or on the masculine side, or you've reached a level of um, balance and integration within yourself where you, you, you're bouncing back and forth or you identify with both sides. No matter where you are on your journey, no matter what has happened between the two of you on your journey, compassion is necessary, okay? But, that, but, but again, this compassion energy is an integral part of this lesson or this journey, and that, and that is involved or uh, entwined with the, uh, the, the idea or the concept or reality of embodying unconditional love, which is the main focus of this twin flame journey. Yes? Finally, you have card number 27, fertility. The frequency of fertility invites us to be more open, more courageous, more creative, and more joyful than we were before. It activates the potential for something beautiful to grow from our consciousness into a new and grander expression of ourselves. Now, especially with the, with, with, between these two, tantric journey and fertility, there is absolutely an energy of something brand new being born within our lives from this balance, this integration, this union of masculine and feminine within represented here by the tantric journey energy. So for some of you, does this mean like, like if you're in, if you're in physical union with your twin and you know, you can get pregnant, be careful because you might get pregnant. And if you don't want to get pregnant, then maybe take your precautions to not do so. Okay. But, um, this also fertility card, the message that I'm getting with this is that for those of us in the collective that are really walking an independent road right now, are really have um, really embodied, you know, that balance between masculine and feminine energy within and you're moving on or moving forward on your journey, on your life path in a very independent way, um, this is reassurance for you. Okay, that the fertility of this element or this, the fertility of this time period right now is absolutely something that you are able to take part in. You don't necessarily have to have your twin, your divine counterpart um, uh, in your life physically in order to be prosperous. Okay, at the bottom of the deck, we do have pros prosperity. All right, so this is for everybody. It's not just for those of us that are in union. I mean, physical union, okay? 555 five, five again on the counter. It's not, I mean, it's for everyone, but provided that you're doing the work to bring this energy together, to fuse this energy together, and also, I mean, not to put an ultimatum on you and not to say that, you know, if you don't hold compassion, you're not gonna get what you want. That's not how we wanna describe this. We want to be holding a level of compassion because we're all in this together. We are all brothers and sisters. We are all cut from the same cloth, regardless of whether we're on this journey or not, or at least we identify with this journey or not. So holding compassion is going to help you, okay? Excellent. Next thing that I wanna do is I wanna look at what messages we have for the collective? Ooh, hi, Kaya. <laughs> what messages we have for the collective as a whole, both masculine and feminine, from the Secret Language of Light? 
So what messages do we have for the Twin Flame Collective from the Secret Language of Light, Please, Spirit? What messages? Woo! Okay. Hold on just a second here. All right. Let me grab this. Ugh. Okay. So, uh, overall energy at the bottom of the deck is card number 30. There is only light. light. And for the collective, um, that is really... A, a strong reminder. Um, and actually, I'm being brought back to, I think it was last week. Maybe it was, no, no, it was early this, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, it was, uh, it was actually, it was right after the full moon in Virgo, that the night of that. Um, I had a nightmare and many others, you know, other people that, you know, uh, watched Morning Coffee, which is a daily reading that I do, um, also expressed that they were dealing with some sort of strong, fearful energy. Now, a lot of that had to do with the full moon and releasing it and everything, but spirit is taking me back to that moment when I had that dream because it was a reminder that that dream, even though it was kind of like a nightmare, it was a reminder that there is only light, okay? There is nothing to be afraid of. There is nothing to fear, okay? So as, as being, as being, individuals that are here on this twin flame journey or at least are resonating with this twin flame journey we're here to help anchor light okay and we have to remember that there is only light we have to remember that this journey will help us reach higher levels of consciousness higher levels of awakening um, higher energetic levels will help connect you with the truth of who you are and the power that you do have within you that you've always had within you okay so it's just a very strong reminder that there is nothing to be afraid of. No matter what your journey looks like, it, there's never anything to be afraid of, okay? Okay. Very interesting. Look at this. All right, so then we have three other cards here. We have, uh, let's start here. Divine Masculine. We have Healing. And we have Color. And the message that I'm getting from this is that, um, especially with this tantric energy that's going on here, okay, with the fusion of masculine and feminine energy that's happening on a, uh, on a grand collective scale, it is in fact creating a whole lot of a change in our lives, okay? It's also creating a whole lot of healing. And I feel like it's the feminine that is really, as the feminine is on the rise because that's kind of been a theme for the collective for humanity, really, for like a quite a few, quite a while lately. But um, with what I'm picking up here is that the fem as the feminine rises and this tantric energy between the two, the masculine and the feminine, works uh, works through whatever it is our blockages are and all that stuff. As this fusion happens, it is in fact healing the masculine aspect on a collective scale. So that's going to look different for all of you. I think I want to get into the tarot for that. But then with color here, this is a reminder or an understanding that um, there, there are many, many different colors. There is not one color. It's a spectrum of colors, which, under, which as this healing happens, especially on behalf of the masculine or the divine masculine, this is a reminder that we are all part of the spectrum. There is no such thing as a one size fits all situation for anybody. And that is a big healing message for especially the divine masculine collective, mainly because, and the masculine is more susceptible to this because of the fact that masculine energy is more fixed in nature. Feminine energy is more cardinal or free flowing in nature. Okay. But with the current societal climate, okay, of our, our, our society being dominantly patriarch, dominated by patriarchal energies, but twisted and narcissistic and just unbalanced masculine or patriarchal energies, the fact that one size fits all or the fact that we are all part of a spectrum is one of the strongest lessons that, had, that needs to be learned here is one of the strongest things or deepest wounds that needs to be healed here, okay? And the rise of the, femininity, of, the, of the divine feminine 
the, the nurturance, the love, the unconditional love, the care of that fem divine feminine energy is helping this healing come about, all right? Let us get, I want to look at the tarot for that now. I want to look a little deeper into that. So we're going to go to the golden universal tarot here. Um, and I just want to see what else we can get for this healing divine masculine and color energy. Okay, one last shuffle. Well, no, two more. All right. Okay, so what can you tell us, Spirit, about this healing that's happening right here, right now for us? Why is healing divine masculine and color here? Four of wands, yeah. It's a union energy, okay? This is definitely union. And in order for the masculine and the feminine to be in union in this way, um, and we're talking energetically, all right? We're talking internally here. In order for the masculine and the feminine to be in union, there has to be a sense of harmony. There has to be an, a sense of acceptance. There has to be a five, five, five again on the counter. There has to be a sense of accepting the fact that it's that you're no longer living or going to meant to be living in a one size fits all society. So this four of wands energy here is that stability, that groundedness, that, that, that balance between um, care, control, a little bit of rigid, rigidity, uh, power and action from the masculine balanced with the love, compassion, acceptance and nurturance of the feminine. But that, but that nurturance cannot come about, that nurturance cannot survive if we're still labeling each other or, 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 or creating an energetic space where we have to fit into a certain category. It's like we're moving away from the emperor in reverse energy. The emperor in reverse energy is an energy of um, being in control, but in a conformist way. Ah, look at that. At the bottom of the deck, we do have the Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles is like the ultimate nurturer, right? You might be able to say that um, maybe the, the Queen of Cups would be a rival in that sense. But in terms of um, the Queen of Pentacles, this is the archetype of like the wife and the mother, okay? This is the, 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 the homemaker, the, sta the steady, stable, sturdy, compassionate, unconditionally loving and providing energy of the feminine, all right? That's beautiful. The queen of pentacles is in fact unconditionally loving. She's also not someone to really take any shit. And as long as you are staying balanced, staying grounded, staying in alignment and doing what it is you know you do to keep up your end of whatever the bargain may be, whether that's household chores or the agreement between within your relationship or just doing what you know is right for yourself and, and, and all that kind of stuff, she will always be on your side. And it's this energy that promotes us, this grounded sense of self, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's this energy of the Queen of Pentacles that helps promotes, uh, promote, promote, <laughs> I'm having trouble getting this out, helps promote the acceptance of grounding your sense of self into your physical reality. I'm going to pull, get one more shuffle here. If there's anything else that you want to say to us, to us about this, please, spirit. Oh, well, damn. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Excellent. So at the bottom of the deck now, we have the seven of swords. Deception, lies, trickery theft. But with that, now we have the empress. So I told you guys, this, it's, it's the feminine energy, the rise of the feminine energy that is really helping to facilitate this. Okay. We have the empress with the knight of swords and the knight of wands. Now the knight of swords and the knight of wands are feeling like the active, the active energy or activation here. I do see the knight of wands as like a, an individual that has been activated. Uh, it's an individual that has been maybe freshly awakened or freshly enlightened. Someone that is on a mission. This, this is the energy of the missionary. Someone that is illuminated. Someone that has a message to share, to send. Someone that is um, a torch bearer, right? This is the energy of lighting the way. The knight of swords is the energy of combating anything that stands in the way. 
I'm hearing specifically combating complacency. Now, both of these nights are very fast moving nights and both of them in given the right circumstances can be extremely reckless, okay? But the saving grace here is this is tempered or it has the energies of the empress behind it, influencing it, driving it. Uh, 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 I guess you could say controlling it, but uh, control is a strong, <laughs> is a really strong word. Um, but we're fighting against, oh my goodness, look, the devil is underneath that. We're fighting against this deception, this tomfoolery I just heard, the control, the narcissism, the, the toxicity. Oh, look, a monarch butterfly is flying by. Oh my God, that's gorgeous. Okay, but we're fighting against this. The rise of the divine feminine energy is helping to heal the masculine because the feminine has gone through a lot of her own healing, which is allowing her to rise in power and strength and understanding. But we're fighting this. Okay. The devil and the, the seven of swords, the toxicity, the lies, the theft, the stealing, stealing, uh, usurping others' power. Like, like be, if you don't, the, the, the idea or the energy of if you do not fit in this, uh, if you don't fit in a good little box, you know what I mean? Then you're not acceptable or you, you, you are shamed in some way or your power is stripped from you. And thus, we have a great transformation death, 1111 on the counter. And you remember, I just noticed that a monarch butterfly was flying by. Transformation right there. Now, underneath death, we do have the Knight of Pentacles, okay? Slow and steady wins the race. This is not a rush. It is going to happen when the time is right, all right? Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so I want to close this part of the reading with an oracle card for us. And we're going to get it from the Lightworker Oracle. All right. So let's see here. Let's just get a closing message for the collective. And then we're going to move into the feminine collective and the masculine collective, respectively. Yes? Excellent. Last shuffle. Let's just get a closing message for the collective here. Please, spirit. There it is. Okay. So we have... Sorry, guys. Okay. We have card number 12. Eternal now. Okay. Eternal now says, within you is great strength and courage. However, just because you can manage to keep going when you are drained or stressed, it doesn't mean you have to do so. You are encouraged by your higher guidance to request assistance in letting go of tension within your mind and body. You will gain energy through this release and perhaps even see things in a new and more optimistic light. Shifting into a more present, relaxed, and enjoyable state of being will help you overcome the past and successfully create your future. That's perfect. That is absolutely beautiful. Okay, yeah, we're going to leave it there. Okay, excellent. So um, th there is a lot of great change that, that's happening here. There is a lot of great change that's happening here. And so uh, the, the, guidance, the, the guidance here right now is that if you feel like you need time to rest, to let go, to recuperate, to separate, to isolate, please, by all means, take that time, obviously within reason, but take, it, take that time for yourself, okay? Also, you are being guided to ask for help in embodying the changes that you are going through. Okay? Excellent. All right. Bear with me here. Let me reset. And then we will get started. We're going to work with the, we're going to look at the feminine first. 
and then we're going to look at with the, look at the masculine. Yeah, stay tuned. All right, feminine, it's your turn. So let's get into your energies here for the divine feminine. What I want to do is. I want to look at this in more of a specific energy rather than using like, because with, with the, the collective reading, I used the sacred geometry deck and the, um, the secret language of light. I want to get a little more personal here. I want to dive down a little bit deeper. I want to see what's going on. Yes, for the feminine collective and yes, for the masculine collective, it's going to be the same structure for them. Um, but I want to see what's, I want, I want this to be a little more intimate. Yeah. So for the divine feminine collective, we're going to start with the energy oracle deck. And I just wanna see what's going on for the Divine Feminine Collective right now. Don't mind Kaya. She's just being a little kitty cat, right Kaya? She's a pretty kitty cat. All right, Divine Feminine. One last shuffle for you. Let's see. What's going on? What's going on for the Divine Feminine Collective right now? What, ooh, all right, right there. For the Divine Feminine Collective. All right. Two more cards, please. Spirit for the Divine Feminine Collective. Two more cards, please. For the Divine Feminine Collective. Okay. And one more. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Okay, overall energy for you, Divine Feminine Collective, we have third chakra, Archangel Gabriel, all right? And I'm getting, I'm getting a very strong energy of expression here, um, but it's not like the typical expression from like, say, your throat chakra. This is expression in terms of moving forward, getting in alignment with what it is that you want, okay? <laughs> the first three cards that we have up here are man holding a heart, strategy, all tied up. And then the, the second row, we have happy family. I see this as the 10, ten of cups energy. Uh, the seventh chakra, Archangel Ariel, right? No, I'm sorry, Uriel, Archangel Uriel. And finally, adjacent possibilities. Now check it out, guys. There is already a message that I know a lot of you are going to be resistant to hearing right now. And it has to do with this man holding a heart energy, okay? But here's the thing. With the uh, seventh chakra here, what's happening for the Divine Feminine Collective right now is we are opening, we're, we're being influenced and guided to open our minds, open our hearts also to the adjacent possibilities. Now, because this is a general collective message, this could go of one of many ways. Some of those ways being, one, you come back together, say you're in separation from your counterpart, your divine counterpart, um, and you end up coming back together, or your, um, this is mainly, this, now this really is mainly for individuals that are in separation. I, I, I don't see how this would work for, uh, oh, for individuals that are in union, unless you're in union with someone that was more of a catalyst. Okay, wait, I'm sorry. I'm really getting ahead of myself, but let's focus on individuals that are in separation because that's the strongest thing I feel coming through right now. So you can either be coming back together with your divine counterpart. You could be manifesting a whole new individual here. Okay. Or you could be Yes, in separation with the person that is your, or you consider to be your divine counterpart, um, and still really super attached to them. Even though you know the situation is toxic, or it's not working out the way that you want it to, or it's not ideal, whatnot, whatever. Now, part of what I'm getting with that is, for those of you that are still very super attached to this one individual, one the first thing that I'm getting is I really kind of want to call these individuals a catalyst right now. Um, and I guess that's being colored from my own journey because now the person that I and that you guys have heard me speak of ever since I started my channel, um, I'm seeing him at this point as more of a catalyst on my journey because yes, there were a lot of things that I experienced that only helped to solidify the fact that 
you know, this person was my divine counterpart, my twin flame or whatnot, whatever, but we're still very much in separation. And I have come to the point where it's like, I'm ready to move on with my life and manifest the right individual for myself, regardless of whether it's him or not. All right. Um, but for those of you, so that's kind of why I want to call. I'm feeling like for a lot of us, these individuals right now really should be, yeah, they're your twin flames, but they really should be seen as more of a catalyst for your journey, for the, uh, for the opening of your crown chakra, for the expansion of your mind, for your expansion, your awakening, your growth, and your ascension even, okay? So now for those of you that are still very, very super attached, like you're having trouble seeing yourself uh, be with someone else other than this person, this is what is happening for you here, okay? With all tied up, which could be seen as the eight of swords energy, could also be seen as a nine of swords energy sometimes. No, that's more of anxiety. Yeah, but all tied up is very much like an eight of swords energy here. But there is divine wisdom, there's understanding, there's, there's down, there are downloads, there's guidance coming through from your crown chakra, I'm sorry, through your crown chakra from the universe that is helping you release yourself from being all tied up. And specifically, what's really, and this, and I'm definitely going to be speaking from experience at this point, but with this one little piece, but what's really going to help break, uh, um, uh, break you free from being all tied up and all bound like this is understanding what it is you truly want out of a happy family or a Ten of Cups energy even. Okay. And I'll say this, what's helped me get, and, and, and I'm sorry, before I go any further, then that all, that all ties into adjacent possibilities. You never really know what's going to happen. Like I'm in this energy right now where I'm really, y'all are going to find out eventually, but I'm really taking some major steps to make some big changes in my life in terms of what would make me happy. Uh, because the feminine, the divine feminine has very much been in this energy as she's rising into power. She's taking her power back and she's choosing herself and she's doing what's right for her. But who knows? Who knows what's going to happen in the future? Maybe he and I will come back together. Maybe we'll cross paths and things will be completely different. I don't know. I don't really care. And I don't mean that in a malicious way. I'm just saying I'm not focused on that because I'm focused on doing what is right for me to make myself happy. And that's where the divine feminine is. So as the divine feminine has been going through this energy of rising into power and rising in abundance and coming into his or her own, right? Because we're not talking gender, we're talking energy. So I'll just keep saying her. Um, this has been helping us untie, okay? And you're right, there you go. Oh, wow, okay, cool. Yeah. So then uh, at the bottom of the deck, you have Archangel Gabriel and Archangel Metatron with the third chakra and the sixth chakra. The third chakra being your willpower, your drive, your focus, your, your personal power, what it is you want to be doing with your life. Sixth chakra is your, crown, is your third eye chakra, being able to envision something better, being able to see something clearer. Okay, there's definitely an energy here with the seventh chakra and all tied up. There's definitely an energy of seeing the situation as it truly is and allowing yourself to f be free of it. To bring in this love, this masculine that you wish to receive. Now, I'm looking at strategy here and the message for the feminine here is to really understand what it is that you want. The strongest strategy you can put into place for yourself is knowing yourself enough to say, okay, I do want this in my life or I don't want this in my life. And if, that, and if what you don't want in your life, what does not make you happy in your life is an element to, or is an element of the current relationship between you and your divine counterpart, or if you wanna call them your catalyst, that's fine then it is, your, it is upon you to make the executive decision or to take the action steps to release yourself from it. That is your strategy here. And that, was, and that is what the divine is helping you to come to terms with and to understand and is saying to you, 
no matter what you choose in your life, there will always be a way for what it is your, that is meant for you to come to you. But the strongest message for the Divine Feminine Collective right now is to release herself. Re work on releasing herself, especially from the attachment of certain things, of, of the way that you think or feel or want things to be. And to allow yourself to flow with the adjacent possibilities, with the fact that the universe sees this situation from a much higher point of view than your conscious and egoic mind is even capable of. Doesn't mean that you are incapable of great feats, but there is way more. <laughs> there is way more to existence and, and life, okay? Okay, um, let's get into the tarot here. And the first thing that I really want to look at is strategy for the Divine Feminine. Strategy for the Divine Feminine. Why is, the strat why is strategy here? What is this strategy for the Divine Feminine Collective? One more shuffle. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. So why is strategy here for the Divine Feminine Collective? Please, Spirit. Strategy. Why is strategy here? <laughs> okay. Um, overall energy is the Eight of Pentacles. All right. So the Eight of Pentacles is quite perfect because the Eight of Pentacles talks about diligence, talks about hard work, talks about um, consistency, right? This individual in this card is creating eight identical pentacles. If he didn't have any, if he didn't have a sense of consistency, I mean, he'd be making shit all willy-nilly all over the place and he really wouldn't have a collection of products to sell, right? Well, I mean, I guess he could, but that's not his goal, okay? Craftsmanship, hard work. The first card that came out was strategy, y'all, the tower. And with that, we have the four of wands, again, the wheel of fortune in reverse, okay? And with the wheel of fortune in reverse, what I'm hearing is stopping the karmic cycle. And this is something that I was picking up on for the, the, the Twin Flame Collective months ago sometime last year i kept saying early last year even it may have even it may have even been back early 2019 right before i stopped doing twin flame readings for a while but this energy of the wheel of fortune in reverse what i'm hearing for the divine feminine collective is representative of getting off the ham the, the karmic hamster wheel stopping the karmic cycle changing your destiny but you're changing this destiny and taking a leap of faith because, with the fool energy, because you have a greater sense of inner union and inner stability. You have a greater sense or understanding of what it is you truly want in life and how to go about getting it. Now, for, we, are, we are clarifying strategy, okay? So maybe you don't necessarily know how to go about getting it just yet, but you do have this greater sense of inner union and inner stability, which is giving you the foundation that you can work from to create or understand what it is that you really want and how to go about getting it, okay? And also with that, we do have the Four of Pentacles here. Now, the Four of Pentacles is kind of giving me a twofold energy because it, it, the Four of Pentacles is, is uh, typically about holding on to something, um, yes, being grounded, uh, but it can be like a little bit of a hoarding energy. And definitely for those of the Divine Feminine Collective that are in this all tied up energy of not even being able to fathom giving their heart to someone that is not their divine counterpart, that's the hoarding, um, holding too tightly energy that the Four of Pentacles can represent. However, in context with the rest of the cards here, the Tower, the Wheel of Fortune in reverse, and the Fool, Okay, you have the Four of Wands and the Four of Pentacles. So the energy that I was picking up on with the Four of Wands of that inner stability is also represented by that Four of Pentacles. That Four of Pentacles is the physical foundation. The Four of Wands is the spiritual energy that can now run through that physical foundation and help fuel the fire 
of you creating something new. Well, I'm sorry, let me say that differently. The physical foundation represented by the four of pentacles is the base, is the physical ground, is the physical structure that allows this spiritual energy or the fire, the creative expression of spirit to now flow through you so that you can, in fact, do, go, do out with the old, change your destiny, and take a leap of faith. But that, that is all clarifying strategy here. So if you're new to this concept or if you're new to this level, allow whatever needs to fall to fall, but also allow yourself from this place of stability. And looky here, you guys, I just, re I just recognized this. You have four and four, which equal an eight. So even if you don't know exactly what to do right now, allow yourself to settle into this foundation, four of pentacles, allow your spiritual foundation to flow through this foundation, four of wands. And then from that point, you can, you can start to do the work task by task, day by day, minute by minute, um, whatever, but whatever. You don't have to have all of the answers. Spirit is saying is, an, is assuring you, you don't have to have all the answers in order to start doing the work to strategize in getting exactly what it is you want. Okay. Now, I, last thing I want to look at with the tarot is all tied up. So why is all tied up here for the divine feminine collective? Why is, ooh, I'm going to stop right there. Okay. Overall energy, hmm, five of wands, inner conflict. Yes, there is external conflict. And that is between you and this counterpart, or maybe if you want to call them a catalyst, then okay, call them a catalyst. But what I'm picking up on here is there is, exter there is external conflict that is only fueling greater internal conflict, okay? Very interesting. So what we have here is the Knight of Cups, the Empress, and Judgment. We also have the Knight of Pentacles, the Three of Cups, uh, Strength, and the Knight of Wands. Okay, there is a lot of movement here. So, all right, cool. So here's the thing, you guys. Yeah, wow. All right, here's the thing. And I guess spirit wants me to say it this way because this is a point of, this is a frame of mind that's gonna help us really understand or, or, or put some more pieces together or at least make some sort of change. If you're dealing with a really strong difference of opinion type energy or a, a strong ego battle, okay, that is causing a lot of inner conflict for you, the point of view that I think is really necessary for you to latch on to right now is the fact that this individual has absolutely catalyzed an awakening for you. Knight of Cups, Knight of Wands, the Empress, which is the divine feminine energy, and judgment. Spirit just said, this does not mean you guys are, going to, are not going to come back together. However, as it cur currently stands, there's too much ego involved. There's too much conflict involved. There's differing of opinion. And in some cases, you guys are just going in different directions. And that's fine. That is absolutely okay. Okay? But then with the Knight of Pentacles, the Three of Cups, and Strength here, the guidance is have the strength to move forward on your journey, Knight of Pentacles, regardless of whether this person is a part of your life or not. Okay? The Three of Cups energy is a celebration on behalf of the universe because you are taking, I want to say you're taking yourself to task, or you are embodying the mission. You're doing what it is that you need to do that is right for yourself. And ultimately, that is what's going to bring a close to this all tied up energy, to this nasty, toxic, narcissistic cycle. But you see, here's the thing about that, guys, because that's what was coming through with strategy. Taking yourself off the karmic hamster wheel. But what really helps that is understanding what it is you truly want. 
Because once you get down to the bottom of what it is you truly want, or what it, when, whenever you recognize what it is that you truly want in a masculine partner or a masculine counterpart, then you won't want to take anything less than that. You will, in effect, rise above all of that and say, you know what? No, I actually can't get that from you. So I am going to have the strength to say thanks, but no thanks, and move on. Yes? Okay. I want to close this out and I want to look at the Moonology deck here to give you all some sort of understanding of where you are in your cycle um, in this phase, especially in closing out this energy, okay? One last shuffle. Okie dokie, here we go. Ooh. Yep. Overall energy, you have a balsamic boon, a time for healing, which makes perfect sense because with this card, third quarter moon, are just, are adjustments are required, and then waning mood, moon, what do you need to release? Okay. Now, you do have new moon in Virgo, a time to give rather than to take. And a lot of this twin flame energy or twin flame stuff is about being of service. So the twin flame energy is of fifth dimensional reality, right? A fifth dimension and above, but that's like the lowest dimensional reality that it can even exist because it is an energy of unconditional love. And when you reach the fifth dimension, that's the first dimension that you, that you hit in which unconditional love is a thing, is, exists, right? The fifth dimension is also all about service, being of service to others. And there's like a bartering system going on there. It's like, it, that like uh, being of service to others is like energetic currency, okay? So this is not a time for, for us to say, give me my twin flame, I want my divine masculine, I want, I want, I want. No, this is a time for you to connect to unconditional love and connect to being of service to the world in whatever way that resonates for you. Okay, and then finally, you have here, show the world the real you, full moon in Aquarius. It's time to stop, to let go of the burdens. It's time for us to stop trying to shape ourselves or be this ideal person so that we can have our twin or we can say, yeah, we're on a twin flame journey. No, you are meant to be the person that you are meant to be, regardless of what that looks like, warts and all, yeah? balanced between positive and negative light and dark embrace all sides of yourself show the world the real you and allow yourself to release and make the adjustments to release everything that you need to release so that you can show the world the real you okay excellent so there you have it divine feminine i hope that was helpful for you thank you for tuning in Stay tuned, guys, because the masculine is next. All right, masculine, it's your turn. So let's look at what's going on for you. Let's talk about this a little bit. Now, uh, I did have a card pop out while I was shuffling and in between, and it was the patience card. Um, and so for the, the, the divine feminine individuals that are cross-watching for a divine masculine, or maybe if you're looking for information about your inner masculine, the message there is you gotta be patient, okay? This is not an easy feat. This is not an easy task. What we need to keep in mind is that masculine energy is denser in nature than feminine energy. Um, and so uh, masculine energy is very fixed in nature as well, whereas the feminine is cardinal in nature. So the feminine is just changing it up, just going with the flow, like can literally just change on a dime. Masculine doesn't work that way, okay? Um, so you can't require 
masculine energy, whether it's an external being, an external partner, or your own sense of masculine energy within. You can't require it to move any faster or to accomplishing something any quicker than is natural, okay? Patience is key. But then the, also the message here is that masculine, you've got to be patient with yourself as well. I know a lot of people are putting a lot of pressure on you right now. But quite frankly, this is your journey. This is your job. This is your responsibility. You do it on your terms. Don't let anybody else tell you when, how, why to do something. Okay? Unless it resonates with you, right? Okie dokie. So with that said, let's get into this energy here. And we're going to use the, we're going to start with the energy oracle. What's going on for the Divine Masculine Collective right now? What messages do you have for the Divine Masculine Collective right now? Please, Spirit. What do you want to talk about for the Divine Masculine? Oops. One last shuffle. Okay. All right. What's going on for the Divine Masculine here? For my good old DMs. Oh my goodness. Woman holding a heart. So we're mirroring each other, guys. The Masculine and Feminine Collective are mirroring each other because the Feminine got man holding a heart. Uh, the Magician and the Mirror. The angel of balance. Oh, looky here. Uh, Archangel Raphael is still here with you, Divine Masculine. Uh, fourth chakra with the Archangel Raphael. That came out last week. All right. Two more cards, please, Spirit. Oh, there they are. Uh, oh. Okay. So this is definitely a, a similar message from what came through last week, because at the bottom of the deck, you have a broken heart. And that's what we were talking about last week in our last in the last reading. Um, mending the, the, the divine masculine being in an energy of mending his broken heart. OK, um, the last three cards that have come out here, we have Archangel Raphael with the fourth chakra. We have community. And we have Garden and the Gate. So right off the bat, I want to talk about this first, okay? Because what this is for you, Divine Masculine, is you being the center of attention potentially in this community circle or in this community environment or the status quo, the establishment, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever, and standing there looking out with garden and the gate, looking out onto the vast world around you, desiring to change your expression, desiring to be free, desiring to not have to be in this conforming energy, wanting to set yourself free. And it's definitely Archangel Raphael, which is here with you now and was here with you last week and is eternally with you. Like, don't get me wrong. Archangel Raphael is never going to leave you. But his presence in your life right now is very, very prominent because it is with it's through Archangel Raphael's efforts in helping you to open up and heal your heart that is allowing you to see the potential of what could really be out there for you. This is kind of feeling like a grass, the grass is greener on the other side type of energy. But like with that saying, it's like, well, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. In this situation, though, it is because it's freedom from conformity. It's freedom from having to play a specific role that you either don't resonate with anymore or never resonated with to begin with. But because of how we how society has labeled masculinity and labeled femininity, it's the role you've had to play. Now, let's get into the top cards here. You have Magician in the Mirror and the Angel of Balance. So in terms of this energy here, Garden in the Gate and Community, you have this ability to change your life for the better, for your own betterment, which would in turn change uh, make positive change for everyone else around you too, especially if it is in a way that you're following your heart, you're following your higher guidance, whatnot, whatever. But I know, yes, it's like, okay, but what about all these people around me that expect certain things of me? Well, to be quite honest, it's probably time for them to let go of those expectations as well, especially if it's detrimental to you, especially if he, especially if it requires you to be something that you're not truly, that you aren't truly, that you don't truly resonate with. And what I'm getting with this community card here is that these people could be, put, could be 
perpetrate, um, perpetuating toxicity. And with this, with you kind of going through this heart chakra awakening here, you're kind of opening up or waking up to that. And you're desiring to, desiring to be free and uh, be, to be set free. Ah, and you're kind of wanting them or requiring them to release you. But you have the power to release yourself. And all there, and really, there ain't nothing to it but to do it, bro. At this point, you're just going to have to. If you want your own freedom, then you have to go ahead and take it. Nobody, especially not these people, is going to hand your freedom to you. Why? Bro. Bruh. Let's be, let's be real. Let's be logical, okay? Let's be balanced here. What makes you think that these people that have been only fueling this fire of requiring you to be something that you're not, just as they always have, what makes you think they're all of a sudden going to have a change of heart and release you from this prison? The only reason, the only reason that you are even in this mindset to be put in a place and a position to have the power to create your own reality, to create whatever it is you want, do for yourself, is because you are working here with Archangel Raphael, and it's, who is helping you hope, open your heart. And it's not like these people don't have access to him or his energies or his healing, whatever, but they're not open to it. Their minds are stuck in this lower three-dimensional mindset. And you, my friend, are rising above that. It's part of your life journey. It's part of your destiny. It's part of why you're here, bro. Okay. So if you want your freedom, my friend, you're going to have to set yourself free, which actually for some of you, maybe even a vast majority, if not all of you is part of the mission is part of the plan. Set the record straight, pull yourself out of that energy, set an example catalyze the awakening, the change of others. And that doesn't mean that you have to go around, you know, preaching around others, but what, when you take your power back and do what it is you want for your life, yeah, they're, they're probably gonna get real pissed, these people, but it's necessary for them to start to go through their own challenge in awakening as well. Everybody's here for this. Whether you're playing, regardless of whatever side you're playing on, if you're here on the planet at this moment in human history, you came here for the ascension. So don't feel bad. You're not doing anything wrong. You're actually doing exactly what you're meant to be doing here, okay? Now, the other thing that I'm getting with this is we have woman holding a heart. And it seems here that there are some of you out there that are working on manifesting. I'm just going to say it like, I'm just going to say it how I feel it you are working on, uh, on manifesting your divine feminine back. But you recognize, with Archangel Raphael's help here, and this angel of balance here, you recognize that you're not going to be able to do that if you don't have a sense of balance, if you don't break free from these chains of social, uh, so social conditioning, societal pressure, societal norms, gender norms even. Because check it out. Divine Masculine, the feminine ain't about this life. Conformity? Hell no. And that's exactly what we were talking about in the beginning of the reading. We are moving out of a one-size-fits-all mentality, a one-size-fits-all life style. We are moving with the rise of the feminine energy. The healing and union and fusion that's happening here is allowing us to embrace the spectrum that is life the spectrum that life has always been. Think about color. Think about the color wheel in general. Think about the fact that we can only see with our physical eyes a small percentage of the different amounts of light that are out there. We're only seeing about 1% of the spectrum, you guys. So why is it that our lives have to be lived or have to fit in that tiny little box? I mean, it is teensy tiny. You know what I mean? Like, come on. 
Okay, all right. Let's go into the tarot. Excuse me. And I want to look at, I mean, we've already talked about it pretty sufficiently, but okay, fine. Let's look at um, community and garden and the gate. And then I want to look, look at woman holding a heart for you, divine masculine, okay? All right, community and the garden and the gate. One more shuffle here for you, divine masculine. And let's see what this energy is here for you. What is community and the garden and the gate for the divine masculine collective? Wow. Okay. Woo! All right. Overall energy is the nine of swords. And then you have, oh, damn. Wow. Okay. You have the king of pentacles, the queen of cups, the knight of wands, the ten of swords, and the tower. So, even more mirroring because the feminine got the tower as well. You also have the ace of wands, which has fallen out in reverse here. And that did fall out on the fourth chakra with Archangel Raphael. What I'm getting with this is what Archangel Raphael is helping you to do is helping to inspire you to move in a new direction. However, what I'm feeling with this divine masculine is that you're not quite ready to accept this torch. That is also represented here by the Knight of Wands, okay? You're not quite ready. You don't know how you feel about it. You don't know what to do about it. I mean, you see it, it's in front of you. I mean, at this point, you can't really deny it. That's kind of what I'm feeling here. But you're not quite ready to take this torch yet. And Archangel Raphael is saying, it's all good. You'll get there when you're ready. Now, Explaining the rest of this, you have the King of Pentacles, which is you, Divine Masculine, and it's speaking to your solid and uh, your rootedness in this energy, in this, I heard, time-space continuum. So what, th th this collective energy, this, yes, what all this, the three of the community energy, right? You're rooted in this. However, you have this feminine energy, this compassionate, unconditionally loving feminine energy that is catalyzing or influencing an awakening within you, Knight of Wands, which is then bringing in some pretty extreme circumstances. Ten of Swords, the Tower. It's bringing through some really massive changes and endings. And <laughs> I kind of want to say the fucked up thing about it is homegirl ain't even nowhere else in sight. Like she's done dipped, Queen of Cups. This is the divine feminine here in her unconditionally loving energy. But because she's unconditionally loving of you, she's also unconditionally loving of herself. And she ain't trying to fuck around with this toxic shit. So homegirl dipped. She ain't even around and she still has this effect. And it is freaking you the fuck out. Nine of Swords. Because damn, is she powerful. She is so powerful that she is forcing you to look deeper at yourself and to look at the heartbreak that you're dealing with, that you've been dealing with. But you see here, Divine Masculine, even though this shit sucks, right? It's still leading you to your Ten of Cups, to your ultimate wish fulfillment. And it's pushing you into this energy of being the emperor that you know you are, being in control of your life, being the master manifester, being the master of your own domain, making that executive decision or having that strength and power to make the executive decisions for your life instead of allowing these people to make them for you, which ultimately is bringing you a victory and a completion of the karmic cycles of the life lessons. The only thing we don't have here right now is the Ten of Wands. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Ten of Swords, Ten of Cups, Ten of Pentacles, the Emperor, Six of Wands. 
Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Let's look at woman holding a heart. Now this also, woman holding a heart could be the rise of feminine energy within you, the rise of the divine feminine, you getting acquainted with your own inner feminine energy. But let's see, what is woman holding a heart here for the divine masculine collective, please spirit? Uh, yeah. Okay. 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 Whoa. Oh, damn. Overall energy is the eight of cups. All right, so check it out. What I was saying before about the divine feminine, your divine feminine counterpart being the catalyst for all of this change within you, I mean, yup, queen of pentacles, death, judgment, the hanged man, the world, and the two of cups. Now, here's the thing. This is why the divine feminine, your divine feminine counterpart, what not whatever, is coming through as the queen of pentacles in this state or in this stage because the queen of pentacles is nurturing loving caring unconditionally loving she is the mother archetype she is the wife archetype she is stable she is grounded she is self-sufficient she is independent but she's also family oriented here's the thing the queen of pentacles knows her worth and y'all we've been talking about this for ages the Queen of Pentacles knows her worth and is not going to put up with any sort of shit from anybody. Regardless of how many times you say you love her, this, that, whatnot, whatever, if you're not holding up your end of the bargain, honey, she is gone and she is not going to give it a second thought because she knows she's worthy of much more than that. And thus, homegirl has left Joe ass in the dust. But it's because... She loves herself unconditionally and she loves you unconditionally. And she knows that she deserves more. She holds herself to a fairly high standard. So that means she's going to hold the people that she loves, her counterpart or the people that she chooses, chooses to have in her life to that high standard as well. And if you don't meet that standard, she is not going to tangle with you because she knows she deserves better and you deserve better from yourself and you can do better. And she is not going to engage in anything less than that with you. Thus, her walking away, eight of cups, catalyze, oh, and, and releasing, letting go, four of pentacles, catalyzes this change in perspective, transformation, and thus ascension. And... The union, oh, 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 and completion, right? Did I say that? Completion with the world. The union also between, of masculine and feminine energy within you, your own inner sense of union, balance, and harmony. But keep in mind, guys, that I was picking up that the divine masculine is trying to find a way to manifest his divine feminine back. How long is that going to take? I don't know. Don't worry about that, divine feminine. It's none of your business. Let the masculine do what the masculine needs to do on his own terms, in his own time. It is not your responsibility to keep tabs on him. Understood? Okay. Last thing I want to look at for you, Divine Masculine, is Magician in the Mirror, and then we're going to wrap this up. So what messages do we have for the Divine Masculine Collective in terms of Magician and the Mirror? <clears throat> Ah, all right. Overall energy, we have the Page of Swords, which is an inquisitive energy, which is the seeker, which is uh, the one that, that, that wants to learn, right? The Page of Swords is the individual that the king and the queen sends out to gather information, 
the scout. Yeah, often the Page of Swords is, oh, damn, yes. Often the Page of Swords is looked at as an energy of somebody is watching someone else, okay? But that's because of the spy, scout, sentry type energy that the Page of Swords embodies. For you, Divine Masculine, in terms of Magician and the Mirror, you are being advised to learn and gather as much information as you can. The other card that has come out here is the Seven of Cups, but the Seven of Cups has fallen out in reverse on top of all of this stuff here that we were talking about with like community and, um, and this card, uh, uh, Garden and the Gate, right? All of that that we were talking about before, the Seven of Cups <laughs> has fallen out in reverse on top of that. And so in terms of you being the master manifester, or this is why I got so excited, the magician, right? Oh, oh sorry guys. I'm, I'm freaking out, man. <laughs> but look, with you being in terms of like being this magician, this master manifester, your guidance here is to seek the truth in everything. Do everything that you can to cut away all of the illusion, because I promise you, these people, part of this community here, they want you to be confused. They want you to be asleep. They want you, your mind to be foggy and unclear, because then that way they can continue con to control you. The clearer you are, the worse for them. Because once you do get real clear on the situation, you can manifest your way, manipulate your way out of there. Just like the way they manipulated you into staying. Underneath the magician was the four of wands. More mirroring between the masculine and the feminine. Because you have the stability to do this now. And the rise of the divine feminine energy is helping you get this spiritual, passionate, creative stability. Whatever you want to call it. Even if you don't want to call it spiritual stability, that's fine. Call it creative stability. Stability. This is the foundation, the grounding that is going to help you to create exactly what it is that you want. And you have it at your disposal. Okay? Let's, okay. I want to get, I want to do, um, I want to look at the, uh, the Moonology deck to get a little more guidance for you. But I'm also, Divine Masculine, I'm being pulled to the Ask Angels deck for you guys as some extra assurance for you or just some extra answers for you, okay? Last shuffle from the Moonology deck and we'll see what that we have for you there. Okay. Okay. Ooh, all right, over at, at the, okay. At the bottom of the deck, overall energy, you do have new moon. A new start is coming. Look at you, Divine Masculine. A new start is coming for you, okay? And, oh, gosh, I don't mean that to be ominous. Like, it's coming to you, not for you. Like, ah, I'm coming to get you. No. <laughs> no. A new start is coming to you, okay? New moon in Cancer. You and your loved ones are safe. Look, you're going to have to... Look, Divine Masculine, this is unavoidable. You're going to have to shake some shit up. You're going to have to make some people very unhappy. You're going to have to make some people very uncomfortable. But trust me and trust us when we say they are safe. It is meant to be this way. They have got to go through this transformation just like everybody else does. You are not failing anyone. You're not destroying anyone's life. You are only helping to make their lives better, brighter, more light filled more loving. But in order to do that, we've got to put all this toxic energy to rest. Okay. You have waxing crescent moons, moon, have faith in your dreams. And finally, disseminating moon, time to breathe out. Breathe, bro. My dude, I'm going to need you to take a few breaths and just chill, relax, because everything's going to be okay. All right. All right, so let's now close this out. Let's see what the Ask Angels deck has for you. What reassurance do you have for the Divine Masculine Collective at this time, please, Spirit? Last shuffle. Let's see, let's see, let's see here. 
What do you want to say to the Divine Masculine Collective to close out this reading? Let's get two more cards, please, Spirit. Okay. All right, guys. So check it out. There's a reading that I did for Morning Coffee this past week. Um, and it says it, it's about compromise. It's it, it, I, I, and actually there are, there are two readings that it's the day before that. And then the one that actually talks about the compromise, but, um, this card came out for that reading compromise. Okay. And, and this has been a message for the collective that I've been mainly saying to the feminine, but also I need to be saying it to the masculine too. We have to meet each other halfway. We have to meet each other in the middle. It's not about the masculine getting, getting up to the fifth dimensional energies and being like embodying things like the feminine does. And it's not, like, it's not about the feminine having to do the same down in the physical. We are two parts of the same whole. We are all in this together. We are all meant to be in partnership with each other. Why do you think there are so many damn people on this planet right now? No, it's not just because we're all fornicating like crazy and, and blah, blah, blah. No, we all chose to came, come here. We all chose to come here to work together. And that's what the, one of the biggest lessons of duality in, a, in this time-space continuum, however you wanna describe it, that's one of the biggest lessons in duality. You can't have one without the other. So while the feminine embodies more of the spiritual and esoteric and loving aspects, the masculine embodies the physical, controlling, action-oriented aspects. We are meant to work together. So we have got to compromise. So the message for you, masculine, is that you've got to work on compromising too. Work on trying to see things as much as you possibly can from the feminine side. And no one is, again, no one is requiring you to see it 100% from the feminine side, but... You can at least try because we're, this is not supposed to be a society where men or women are ruling everything. We're supposed to be doing this together. Compromise is key here. Underneath that is it's up to you. And underneath that is communicate clearly. But the three cards that came out as your guidance here, ask for help from others. Friends, colleagues, reach out to spiritual people. Start to under, try and, you know, open your mind and just, just investigate. See what it's about. See what the points of view are. See what resonates with you. But also ask for help from the angels, your spirit guides, your ancestors, God, source, creator, whomever you resonate with. Because they are here and willing to help you, but they're not going to interject unless you ask for it because of the law of free will, which... I'm not going to go there. <laughs> you also have get more information. And that's what the angels were saying to you here with in embodying this master manifester energy, the magician, page of swords and seven of cups in reverse. Get more information. Also, research. Look into the spiritual world. Start to make your own conclusions about the spiritual world or spirituality. Because I'll tell you this much, y'all. I am very much a spiritual person, always have been. But I am not a one-size-fits-all spirituality type of person. I am very independent in my spiritual practice. And I believe firmly that there are as many expressions of spirituality as there are individuals on this planet. Think about how many individuals there are on this planet. This is not a one-size-fits-all game or society any longer. Finally, you have a resounding yes. You are worthy of this divine masculine. Yes, this is your twin flame. Yes, this person loves you. No, they're not going to take any shit from you. But yes, that's exactly what you need right now to shape up. But looky here. You have the sun. And I think. No. You have the sun and the moon, the twin flame dynamic. Good God, I didn't think there was a twin flame card in this deck, but we just found it, didn't we? Holy shit. Well, there's your confirmation right there, Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine for those of you that are watching. 
And it's mostly for the masculine though. He or she needs this confirmation. Yes, because they really love you. Yeah, all right, I get it, but okay. But at this point, divine masculine, it's up to you. You've got to communicate clearly. You have got to be assertive and you've got to compromise. The ball's in your court. What you gonna do? I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope you have a fantastic week. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.